Hi and welcome to the Vula Pig podcast. My name is Ida and this is a podcast about knitting. I think I'm just gonna make this a Patreon only podcast because yeah, I just feel like doing that. <laughs> um, but we are currently at my parents' house. It is Easter and we spent some days in Copenhagen and now we are here. Anton is playing out, I'm in my mom's craft room and Anton is playing right out here and you can probably hear him talk a bit and the rest of the kids are downstairs, my two nephews are here and my mo my brother and sister-in-law and uh, yeah we've been outside most of the day making a big bonfire of yeah all the different sticks <laughs> things my parents has have around the, on their property. I don't have that many things to show you because I have been working pretty monogamously on things this month. Um, so I have one finished object and then I have two works in progress. And then I have one thing that's not cast on yet, but that I am planning on casting on maybe tomorrow or the day after I don't know but I think I would like to have it cast on for when we are driving back home I think it's gonna be nice for the car actually I do have another thing that would be nice for the car but I'm gonna talk about it uh, a little bit later so my first finished object is the Sunday balaclava by Petit Knit and as you saw on that uh, the vlog for this month. I feel like I have talked quite a lot about it actually on the vlog But it is finished now And I will just talk about it shortly anyway <laughs> um, In case you haven't seen the in case you haven't seen the vlog, but um, Yeah, so the original pattern has a round color or bib I don't know what you call that that is sort of almost down to to here all the way around kind of like the black part of of this sweater actually so both on the front and on the back and then it um, of course uh, hugs the neck and has the opening as you see here I did not want that because I find that that kind of color is kind of annoying um, when you are wearing a jacket and I know you can have it on top of the jacket but it's still sort of I feel like it just would get in the way and I would like um, and I say this it's not I'm not gonna wear it so I'm just assuming it for the kids and I think Anton is gonna get this one as they could too actually I don't know one of them are gonna get it but for the kids I would like it to be a little smaller so they can have it underneath their jacket instead of on top of it so that it fits, fits under the jacket and we can zip it up and they have a nice and warm neck but they don't have a lot of bulk underneath the jacket so what I did was I knit the pattern as it was written I had that bit up here as I also talked about on the blog where I actually ended up picking up and doing a bit of short row shaping here on the front part so that I um, basically so that the hat covers more of the forehead on the pattern pictures and also on a lot of pictures that I've seen on Ravelry the edging of the hat basically sits almost all the way all, almost all the way back here and um, of course it keeps the ears nice and warm but this part here can get kind of cold <laughs> um, and so for like for a regular hat basically the the forehead is covered if you're wearing a regular hat and a balaclava it doesn't in the same way so I just wanted to have add a little more warmth to the forehead for Este or Anton and it is not let's see it's not that pretty you can tell and I have still not washed it so maybe it's gonna block out a little bit better with blocking but I hope it's gonna help just a little bit with that um, that part and uh, definitely if I'm gonna knit this again so basically you cast on where do you cast on? I think you just cast on here um, for, for this this part here and you knit this part first 
I would definitely add a lot more, not a lot more, but I would add maybe two centimeters more of length here so that it gets a lot wider. Um, wider, yeah. Uh, so that it covers more of the forehead. Or I maybe, I don't know, it could also... I'm just thinking if you did that, then maybe that would be a lot of extra fabric on the back of the head. So maybe actually just casting on and then starting out by doing short rows on the front would be a better idea, kind of like I did here. That's probably what I would do if I needed it again. Um, and then again, from for the um, the bottom half here of of the pattern, I just I knit according to pattern until I reach this point. Then I just divide it for front and back. I so there is equal amount of stitches on the front and the back. It besides two stitches that are one here and one here that I cast off. So basically, I I knit the front um, front panel here. I reached the middle point where I had that extra stitch that I had marked. I cast that stitch off and then knit across the back until I got to the second stitch that I had marked off. I cast that off again just so there is a little bit of a space between the front and the back. And then I just continued working on the front until I thought that it would be long enough. And then I cast off, um, I think it was on the wrong side row. I cast off, not in pattern, but just like a regular cast off, um, so that I got, let's see, there's kind of a little, a nice, I kind of, I kind of like that little etching down here, like that. I think it looks pretty nice actually on this, um, on this pattern. And I did the same on the back. I added more length on the back because often I find that um, if you move your head around and look down, that's um, you just need a little more space here on the back. I mean, we rarely walk around like this, so we don't need that much um, fabric on the front to cover the front side of the neck. Uh, what else? Yeah, I held two strands together of... It's blowing out a bit here, but um, actually quite a lot. <laughs> um, but two strands together of my silk merino in the dew, morning dew colorway, I think it's morning dew, or dew drop, I think it's morning dew. And it worked perfectly for getting the correct gauge. So yeah, that is done and it's definitely something that they, they could wear right now here for spring, especially because there's silk in here so it's not super warm, but still warm enough. I need some tea. For my second work in progress, no actually my first work in progress because that one was a finished object, I have cast on for a modified fiber folk shawl. You can see here I've actually worked quite a lot on this. I'm in the middle of a row. I can, I'm gonna knit a bit while I talk I think so I can get to the end of the row. But um, oh yeah if you've noticed my, my thumb. I cut myself, so that's why it's. I have a band-aid on there. But anyway, I um. I have not had. For the last few months, I have not really had anything for my neck, which sounds funny for a knitter, I find. But we have lost. I say we, me, but I'm blaming Anton a bit, which is silly. He's just three. <laughs> but. Yeah, so Anton lost a lot of the hats that he had, so uh, a lot of his balaclavas, we've also lost, lost some of his gloves. I mean, we are out almost every single day, so of course we lose stuff every so often, but this winter has just been crazy. So he lost those, I thought it was three, but two balaclavas and some gloves and things. And then I, um, I have lost, so the original fiber folk shawl, you know, the one with the hat of blue and kind of a neutral um, speckly colorway. I lost that one. I then lost my modified fiber folk shawl which was like a also kind of a neutral with sort of pinkish speckled um, colorway and then I had a, the olive view colorway for the second color. I've lost that as well. I have lost that as well. 
I have lost my um, what's it called winter hood by uh, knitting for olive I had like a a red one knit out of pickles cozy that I really liked Enson used that a lot as well so it's like a basically it's a balaclava style um, cowl that has a hat a more loose fitting hat that this than this one I lost that as well so I really don't have anything to wear around my neck and um, I need that I think I do have some shawls somewhere I just don't know when where but the ones that I've been using were the two fiber folk shawl and that winter hood they're all gone <laughs> Um, yeah, so if, if if Jakob isn't felting all this, my knitting stuff, then I'm just gonna lose it myself, so. So I decided to cast on a Fabafolk shawl, a new one, a modified one version again. Oh no, the battery is running low. Okay, we're just gonna continue keeping our fingers crossed. Um, and it is here. I really like this color. It is so pretty. So cast on here, just knitting away. This is gotta stitch all of it. And then I've just been doing eyelid rows whenever I find uh, that it will look good, basically. So it is quite long actually already. I've only been working on this for maybe three days. No, that's not true. I cast it on. I cast it on Monday and today is Saturday, so almost a week, but it's a lot for me. And I am using this yarn, which I dyed myself. This is a uh, baby alpaca silk and cashmere. It is so nice and wonderful and soft. And I'm holding it together with this silk more hair, which is something that I dyed myself as well. It is a dark gray but it does have a little bit of purple in there not a lot but a bit of it in there so these two held together creates this fabric and I just really like it I have decided to cast on on a size 5 millimeter needle and in the original pattern I have used a size 4 millimeter needle millimeter needle i have a really hard time speaking today um because i wanted it to be very loose and drapey i like that especially when you wear it around the neck i don't want it to be too stiff or tight um i mean not like tight like this but that the fabric just feels tight i want it to be loose and drapey and i really like that for for this fabric it's really just just the way that I want it basically I I knit the second uh, fiber folk shawl that I knit with the olive you and that pink yarn I accidentally cast that on and knit that on a size three and a half millimeter needle and that was just not good for um, I mean I wore it and it was fine wearing but it just felt stiff and kind of non-elastic when I wore it. It's, it. It was just not as nice as I think this will be. Um, so I'm happy with that decision. I think I have been considering just knitting it in one color. So in this color. Battery just died. Just gave it a bit more uh, like a really quick charge and hopefully it will last for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> But I was talking about, I think, the color that I don't know if I should just try to knit this in this one color if or if I should do as the original pattern. That I made the pattern, by the way. I don't know if I said that. Um, but I made the pattern. And just keep it um, with two colors as the original pattern. I don't know. Um, so usually in the original pattern, you knit till... A certain point and then you continue increasing for a bit maybe five ten centimeters and then you do a more rapid decrease so the shape is asymmetrical 
the one color, so that would be this color, is longer than the second color that's gonna be attached. So yeah, you have like an asymmetrical triangular shape basically. Um, but the one that I am thinking about, what I am thinking about, thinking about doing is adding this color here, which is beach comber on silk mohair that I also dyed myself and just adding that but keeping this so the baby silk alpaca cashmere yarn um, as the kind of a base so I'm just gonna switch out the two silk more hairs so you can see them here together I think I think that would be nice and obviously it's gonna be two different colors but it's not gonna be too big of a change and it's also gonna keep the fabric consistent because I don't really have any other uh, colors in this yarn and it's not like it's gonna be a problem substituting this yarn it's a fingering wig so I have a ton of other yarns that I could use but it's just such a nice yarn and I think it would be nice to have that same fabric and feel for the whole scarf or shawl so if I decide to change colors it's gonna be with this one so I'm just switching these two colors around um, or I'm gonna knit the whole thing in the same color I don't know that, know that yet but I will have to figure that out soon because I do have to change colors soon if I decide to do so I did make a mistake here you see right here I did an increase here on the wrong side which is annoying but I'm not gonna whip back I mean, I know you cannot see it when I wear it, but I am considering, as I have before, if I should add an eye cord around the whole scarf. I did knit the Vertices Unite shawl, which is also a shawl that I have lost. <laughs> I knit that years ago, and that is knit in sections. And then once you're done knitting, Basically the, basically the shawl you knit an edge which is an eye cord edge and I just really enjoyed that for that shawl and I think it would be nice for this shawl too. Um, the only thing is I'm also thinking about doing tassels on this one. So um, and the tassels would be I want to do them like at, in this end not in the other end but in this one and then for every row of eyelets that I have I think it would be fun to do not like a huge tassel but just a bit of a tassel here 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 and here and then if I do more short rows oh no um eyelet rows I would do that as well and so I don't know if I should do eye cord tassels any ideas I don't know if it would be possible to do an eye cord edge just for the top here so do eye cord etching up here and then tassels down here. Would that look weird? I don't know. But that is also something that I am considering. Um, or maybe you have an idea for another edge, edging that I don't know about. Not crochet, because I'm not... Uh, well, if it's simple crochet, maybe I could do it, but I'm just not as... I'm not a an advanced crochet at all. I wouldn't even say I'm a beginner crochet. I can do a crochet granny square, but that's just about it. Yeah. So I'm thinking about that. I do have time because that's something that I have to do at the end. But I'm thinking about what to do about that. Okay. So that was the fiber folk shawl. Then I have my last work in progress, and that is the collar cape by Anna Vincent, and that is a pattern from Isaiah's newest collection called the Archives Collection, I think, which is beautiful. I also talked about in the last podcast, called, talked about that in the last podcast, and I think I showed you the swatch in the last podcast, but I have cast it on now, and it is fun to knit, and also very simple to knit. It looks like color work, but you're not really doing color work in the sense that you're not holding two strands of yarn together. Um, while you knit and then switch colors you okay, just don't do that because you are just slipping stitches but it looks like color work as you can see here so I 
have cast on basically you cast on no, show back a bit. Um, you cast on this is the cast on, cast on edge with a provisional cast on I think it's called which is basically a cast on where you have live stitches for um, both front and back so you can obviously cast on and you knit I knit down here but then the stitches on the other side I don't know if you can see you can actually see they are left on a piece of um, yarn so you can just add slide them onto a needle and you're good to go and you knit the other way so that way there is not really any edge here pick up edge you can't see that so I just picked up the stitches here and this is the front so I knit the back part of the back and like this at the back and I'm doing the front and at one point I guess I am gonna join front and back here and then knit back and forth because it is a cardigan so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna join in the round but I'm gonna join to knit back and forth for the whole body when I get past the armholes yeah and like I said it's really fun to knit it is also knit at a quite a large gauge I think it's 15 stitches per 10 centimeter something like that so it goes quite fast and this is just, like I said, slip stitches. So you knit and then you slip these stitches here. It's very, very simple. So if you want to do something uh, that looks like color work, but really isn't color work in the classic sense where you have to like hold one strand of yarn and then change between the yarns, then this would be a very nice um, option that you could, you could do. I know that she's also making a cardigan and I'm kind of thinking, <laughs> now that maybe I should have brought the cardigan pattern only because I I want the sleeves to be more like a cardigan but I am thinking so the sleeves for the for this pattern do I have a, I don't know if I have a picture the sleeves for this pattern are quite wide and um, maybe three quarter length because it is a cape have to see here if you can tell I don't know if you can tell but um, but I want mine to be longer and a, little, a bit narrower but I'm pretty sure I can modify it it's just casting uh, picking up fewer stitches for the armholes I'm guessing and then making sure that it would work with the pattern which is going to be the most important thing so the pattern would still work for knitting the sleeves in the round which I think I'm um, I'm not actually not even sure I haven't read through the pattern but I'm thinking that the pattern or the sleeves are knit in the round um, so I'm gonna try to modify that part and I also don't know how long I want to to knit it there are two length two options for length um, but I think I am if I have enough yarn I'm probably gonna go with the longer version you will see if I have patience for it, but that's what I'm thinking right now. I want to go with the longer version. In the pattern, because it's an uh, ESEA collaboration with um, N Events and also with other designers, the yarn, of, of course, is knit in ESEA yarn. But I am knitting it with a lot of different yarns. I am using um, this yarn, which is called Wool Addicts, and I think it's by faith and it's by laying yarns and it's something that I've had in my stash for a couple of years I bought 10 balls for I don't know what I bought it for um, or maybe I just bought it because it was on sale I don't know but I've had it laying around and it kind of takes up a lot of space 10 of these so excuse me it takes up a lot of space with 10 of these balls of yarn laying around in, the, in boxes and so I was looking at the patterns from the archive collection and I'm not going to get into detail I've talked about it in the last podcast as well but I just really enjoy a lot of the patterns that came out in this collection and I wanted to knit the collar cape and the Noma sweater I think they're probably my favorite ones I also really like the Inga sweater by Lina Holmes Amsweet, but that's all over cape, all over color work, and I'm not quite there yet. 
um, and then looking at the normal sweater and the color cape I knew I had this yarn and I thought that's just the sign that I need to knit the color cape um, so I can get this yarn out of my stash um, so I had the yarn this yarn but I also needed a contrast color and I needed a um, an extra yarn to go along with this yarn to get to get gauge basically so I found uh, the table is a mess here yeah. found this yarn at self-made um, and I can't remember it's fire something I can't remember but it's a 100% wool yarn in this sort of um, mild colorway and it goes quite well with this yarn I find you can see here is what it looks like together and then as I the battery died again but the color that I used for the yarn that I used for the contrast color is two strands of this which is also from self-made I still I don't know what it's called but it's the blow yarn Um, like I didn't say what this con what the content is, but this is also a blow yarn, and this is what is this? Seventy-seven per percent uh, virgin wool and twenty-three twenty-three percent nylon or polyamide. This is around the same um, but it is has a longer um, yardage so I'm holding it together this together with this so three three strands together uh, to get gauge this yarn is a biche boost uh, lambs wool that I've had for a long 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 time I am regretting a little bit that I did not use a hand dyed yarn instead so one of my own hand dyed colorways I think that would be fun but on the other hand I don't know if it would be anything that you would really see because of the thickness of these two so but I, I'm, I'm happy with with the the way it looks anyway but it would have been a little fun with just tiny little pops of color in the contrast color here so that is what I have, I'm working on and what I've finished. I did bring these two to my parents just because, um, like I said, I don't really have any cowls or uh, shawls or anything. So I was thinking about casting these on and knit myself a cowl. I actually have a pattern on Ravelry called the Rhyme Frost Cowl. I'll see if I can remember to add in a picture here. That is knit with a wool ease yarn in a quite a thick gauge. So I would like to knit that up again, but in a lighter yarn or in a lighter version. So like a Rhyme Frost Cowl light, I guess. And then using this yarn, which is my own. And this is astronaut training 100% baby alpaca 100 meters per 100 grams so it's still a chunky yarn but it's less chunky than what the wool is yarn is and um, I'm not gonna hold them together like like this I'm gonna knit with one strand at a time or one skein at a time um, but I think that would be nice to have that in a little bit of a lighter version but still quite warm since this is a chunky yarn and um, maybe I'll do some changes to the pattern it's basically just uh, knit in the round stuck in a stitch and then knit some pearls that's all it consists of and I'm gonna do the same thing but I'm thinking about maybe doing some a little bit of shaping just by changing not by doing increases or decreases but by changing um, the size of the needles so using bigger size on the bottom and smaller at the top to get a bit more of a triangular shape so it's sitting closer to the neck um, or to the face up here around the face 
but we'll see. That's just, I just brought it because, yeah, you always have to bring enough yarn, which, yeah, I don't think I've ever run out of yarn at all <laughs> because I always bring enough. I'm pretty sure a lot of you can relate to that, but I just brought it or just in case I wanted to know something else. Okay, so I am going to sign off for now. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you next month. If you want to be or have a look on Patreon, I have more than 100 videos on there now. I just saw that. Um, you can get access to all of them for free. I have like a uh, seven week, so not seven weeks, seven day trial period. You can go sign up and, and basically I think you can watch as many videos as you like for those seven days for free. And if you are not interested in signing up, um, as a paying member you can just sign off before those seven days are gone um, yeah but uh, I hope you are enjoying Easter and like I said I will talk to you later <laughs> or next month bye